Hello stargazers from all around the world. I'm Luis Miguel Azorin, and I welcome you to a new video on astronomical events from Astro Academy. As we do every month, we're going to review the most important astronomical events, and September 2025 is packed with major happenings. We'll have two eclipses, several meteor showers, and the gas giants at their best for observation. So if you enjoy stargazing and photographing the night sky, stick around, because this month is going to be amazing. As we always do, let's start with the lunar phases. On September 7th, we'll have a full moon, which this time coincides with a spectacular total lunar eclipse that I'll talk about in a moment. On September 14th, the moon will enter its last quarter phase. On September 21st, we'll have a new moon, which happens to be the same day as a partial solar eclipse. And finally, on September 29th, the month will end with the moon in its first quarter phase. Now let's move on to the planets, which will also give us plenty to enjoy this month. On September 6th, Uranus will begin its retrograde motion. An interesting detail that we can track using star maps or astronomy software. On September 16th and 17th, the Moon will approach Jupiter and the Beehive Cluster, creating another great opportunity for binoculars or small telescopes. On September 19th, we'll witness one of the month's most spectacular phenomena, the occultation of Venus by the Moon. It will be visible from much of Europe, Africa and Asia. Ultimately, planetary occultations are still a type of eclipse a rare, uncommon and very striking type of eclipse to observe and photograph through a telescope. On September 21st, another great moment arrives. Saturn reaches opposition. It will be visible all night at its brightest point of the year, ideal for small or medium telescopes. Saturn's opposition is the perfect time to appreciate the Seeliger effect in which the rings appear to brighten. This is because both planets, Saturn and Earth, are aligned with respect to the Sun and therefore the reflection of sunlight off the rings is directed straight toward Earth. However, the 2025 opposition will not be the best to observe this phenomenon since the rings are so tilted that they will appear as just a thin line. Detecting this phenomenon will be quite a challenge, even for medium and large telescopes. Just two days later, on September 23rd, it will be Neptune's turn, as it also reaches opposition. However, with a magnitude of 7.8, you will need a telescope to spot it. But despite its difficulty, it will be the best opportunity of the year to observe and photograph it. Now let's move on to the most notable astronomical events of the month. On September 1st, the Oregid meteor shower will reach its peak with a rate of about 10 meteors per hour. The main event will arrive on September 7th with a total lunar eclipse visible from Europe, Asia, Africa and Oceania. Totality will last about 82 minutes, so we'll have plenty of time to enjoy the moon turning reddish hues in what we know as a blood moon. Keep in mind that eclipses are not seen the same way from all regions of the world. In some regions, it will be visible in its entirety, from the penumbral phase to totality and then back to the penumbral phase. In other regions, only part of this eclipse will be visible. There will even be regions where totality cannot be seen and you can only enjoy the penumbral phase. To find out all the timings and how the eclipse will appear from your area, I suggest you use a planetarium program, such as Stellarium, to check when and how it will be visible where you live. On September 9th, we will have the peak of the Epsilon Perseids, a modest meteor shower with about 5 meteors per hour, but it might surprise us with something special. On September 12th, the Moon will occult the Pleiades Cluster, a very attractive phenomenon to observe with a telescope or binoculars from regions of Europe and Asia. September 21st will be a very special day, because in addition to the new Moon and Saturn's opposition, there will be a partial solar eclipse visible from Oceania and Antarctica. I'll tell you the same thing I said about the total lunar eclipse. If you are within the area where this partial solar eclipse will be visible, use a planetarium type program to check when and how it will be seen in your location. And above all, be very careful when observing the sun. Observing the sun improperly can cause irreversible burns and total blindness. Always use certified solar glasses and filters. And if you have any doubts, always rely on professionals or experienced amateurs. On September 22nd, we will have the autumn equinox. This day marks the beginning of autumn in the Northern Hemisphere and spring in the Southern Hemisphere and is characterized by having a day and a night with the same number of hours. Would you like to capture one of these powerful astronomical events forever? Here are some tips to help you do just that. The total lunar eclipse on September 7th is perfect for photographing with telephoto lenses of 200 mm or more. Use a medium ISO sensitivity between 800 and 1600 wide apertures and exposure times of 1 to 3 seconds during the total phase. Long focal lengths work very well for this type of event, but the low brightness of the moon during the eclipse and the high focal length will require you to use an astronomical mount or a star tracker mount to follow the moon's movement across the sky, ensuring your photos come out perfectly sharp during the exposure. For the partial solar eclipse on September 21st, remember that it is essential to use certified solar filters, both on the telescope and the camera. 
With long telephoto lenses between 400 and 600 millimeters, you can capture spectacular images of the solar disk as it is partially covered. If you also utilize a specialized star tracker mount, you possess the capability to meticulously capture a stunning time-lapse sequence of the celestial event, such as an eclipse, much like this particular one I personally created and documented during the partial solar eclipse that occurred on March 29th. Regarding the observation of planets, Saturn, when it is at its opposition, presents an absolutely ideal and magnificent target for those using small telescopes, as its iconic and intricate rings will be perfectly and clearly visible for detailed observation. Larger telescopes will allow you to capture more detailed images by applying the lucky imaging technique. And also remember that capturing the Seliger effect is a challenge we shouldn't rule out. Neptune, on the other hand, is more elusive and will require a large telescope and some patience, but it's definitely worth trying. The occultation of Venus by the Moon on September 19th is a very photogenic phenomenon and perfect for recording on video, showing the exact moment when the planet disappears behind the lunar edge. From Spain, it will occur in broad daylight. This isn't a problem, since both the Moon and Venus are visible during the day. Additionally, the position of the Moon in the sky will also help you easily find Venus nearby. I highly recommend that you prepare and bring out all of your specialized planetary astrophotography gear to meticulously capture these exceptionally rare and fleeting celestial events, which can result in truly stunning, breathtaking and scientifically valuable photographs. And as for meteor showers, although they are modest this month, you can capture them with a wide-angle lens, sequences of long exposures of about 20 to 30 seconds, and very dark skies. And with that, we've reached the end of the astronomical ephemerides for this September 2025. Remember that at Astro Academy and Academia Natural Portraits, you have complete courses to learn astrophotography and astrophotographic processing in areas such as planetary astrophotography, deep sky astrophotography, and even night photography. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe, and share it with your fellow enthusiasts. We'll see each other again in the next Astro Academy video.